In this lecture, we will be examining Operation Rolling Thunder, which became the lengthiest sustained aerial bombing campaign in American military history. The operation was the first major U.S. attack on North Vietnamese territory, and it also represented a significant escalation in U.S. participation in the Vietnam War. There had been a gradual escalation of Viet Cong activity in the months after the Gulf of Tonkin incident in August of 1964. A Viet Cong attack on February 7, 1965 at a U.S. base known as Camp Holloway was perhaps the most significant of these actions. The camp is about three miles west of the town of Pleiku, which is located in the Central Highlands region. You can see it on this map. Camp Holloway was a helicopter facility built by the U.S. Army in 1962. It was one of the oldest American bases in Vietnam. The camp was also noteworthy for being the highest permanent helicopter base in the country with a field elevation of over 2,600 feet. Um, camp Holloway was close to important road and rail connections between major cities and ports, and its location in the Central Highland regions was recognized by both sides as highly useful and desirable. Nine U.S. military personnel were killed and approximately 130 were wounded in the Camp Holloway attack. In addition, over two dozen helicopters were damaged or destroyed. The Viet Cong also attacked a nearby Marine base with an artillery attack. Just after 12 hours after the attack, President Johnson authorized Operation Flaming Dart a military response that resulted in the bombing of a number of North Vietnamese military targets. Shortly after Operation Flaming Dart, Viet Cong fighters attacked another American base at Quy Nguyen, a city about 85 miles northeast of Pleiku. 23 Americans were killed and dozens more were injured. In response, President Johnson authorized yet another retaliatory strike codenamed Flaming Dart 2. In response to these increasing Viet Cong attacks on U.S. bases, a number of American officials demanded increased action. Pictured on this slide is McGeorge Bundy, a national security advisor to Presidents Kennedy and Johnson from 1961 to 1966. Bundy was perhaps uh, the most prominent of the early proponents of a sustained bombing campaign against North Vietnam. The agreed-upon bombing campaign received the code name Operation Rolling Thunder. U.S. military planners had a number of objectives in the development of Operation Rolling Thunder, and they believed it would only be a matter of months before bombing forced the North Vietnamese to abandon efforts to aid South Vietnamese communists. The first of these objectives, and these changed over time too as well, I should add, uh, the first was to improve the morale of South Vietnam and the South Vietnamese leaders by showing American commitment to their cause. At the same time, this uh, vigorous military response would bolster U.S. credibility as a major world power. Uh, next, um, American planners hoped to force Vietnam, North Vietnam rather, to end its support for the NLF insurgency in South Vietnam by punishing the North Vietnamese with devastating airstrikes. U.S. officials also wanted to demolish the North Vietnamese transportation networks, industrial assets, and air defense systems. Uh, finally, American planners wanted to end the passage of troops and supplies to insurgents into South Vietnam over what would become known as the Ho Chi Minh Trail. U.S. military planners designated the first mission of Operation Rolling Thunder to take place on March 2nd of 1965. The first target was an ammunition storage area west of the city of Hanoi. That same day, American aircraft of a bombed a North Vietnamese naval base. Six U.S. aircraft were shot down during the second attack, which was a bit surprising to the Americans at the time, uh, but all crew members were rescued. The aerial bombardment campaign conducted against the DRV lasted from March 2, 1965 until November 2, 1968. In all, nearly a million tons of bombs were dropped on DRV targets, and over 300,000 bombing runs were made by U.S. and South Vietnamese aircraft into North Vietnam. In 1967 alone, over 100,000 bombing runs were made in the campaign. 
The damage to the North Vietnamese economy uh, by the campaign is estimated between 300 and 400 million dollars, which in today's money would probably be closer to several billion. Uh, but the American cost of Operation Rolling Thunder was approximately one billion dollars at the time, and again, probably closer to six billion in today's funds. The aerial bombardment campaign conducted against North Vietnam destroyed an estimated 77% of all ammunition depots and perhaps as much as 60% of DRV power plants. In addition, over 50% of all major bridges in the country were demolished. Um, nearly 13,000 ships, uh, approximately 10,000 trucks, and 2,000 rail cars were destroyed in the campaign. Yet despite this massive destruction, the North Vietnamese never wavered in their ability to wage war or in their will to continue fighting. The image on this slide depicts a bombed out village in North Vietnam in 1965. Estimates on the number of dead civilians in North Vietnam are difficult to get um, agreement upon and they have significant variance, but most studies put the figure at between 100,000 and 200,000 civilian deaths in the 44 months of Operation Rolling Thunder. Uh, over 50,000 uh, DRV military personnel died in the U.S.-led attacks. Uh, over 1,000 U.S. and South Vietnamese aircraft were lost in the over three years of Operation Rolling Thunder. And approximately 1,100 U.S. military personnel were killed, captured, or MIA uh, during that campaign. Uh, there are a number of reasons why Operation Rolling Thunder was not successful. Um, and we have to begin first with the White House. Much of the decision making on targets came directly from the White House. This is not necessarily a photo op that you see here with Lyndon Johnson and his advisors choosing targets. Um, President Johnson and his advisors regularly um, chose targets and they overruled targets identified as high value by military advisors. Johnson and his advisors were adherents of a philosophy known as gradualism. They argued that threatening destruction was a more powerful indicator of American determination than actual destruction. Under this strategy, it was better to hold important targets as sort of hostage by bombing less important ones, implying that uh, continued fighting by the North Vietnamese would bring heavier and heavier consequences. Um, the American military was also plagued by some serious intra-branch rivalries throughout the course of Rolling Thunder campaign. Submitting a target for approval often meant a chain of command that involved up to three different branches of the military, in addition to this uh, sort of micromanaging uh, by the White House for political reasons. Um, in addition, uh, Cold War era American fighter bomb crews were uh, well versed in the arts of delivering nuclear payloads but much less skilled in the delivery of conventional munitions. And if you think about um, how close you have to be with a nuclear weapon, you don't have to be particularly close to your target to achieve uh, maximum destruction. Whereas with conventional explosives, you have to be much more precise. But the first two years of Operation Rolling Thunder were especially noted for the dropping of bombs too far from targets to achieve the desired destruction. Um, also, the DRV, with assistance, of course, from China and the Soviet Union, rapidly developed um, one of the world's most advanced air defense systems, as well as its own modern air force. Um, while primarily used for defensive purposes, the North Vietnamese use of sophisticated Soviet aircraft, such as the MiG-21 pictured on this slide, resulted in many successful hit-and-run missions against American airstrike groups. Uh, this brings to a close our uh, brief look at Operation Rolling Thunder.